questions about sunscreen? Let's talk about it. Get ready for the most epic sunscreen video yet. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Amna Hussain, board certified pediatrician, board certified lactation consultant, and mom. Maybe you guys know this about me if you follow me on social media, but my husband's actually a board certified dermatologist. So I've gotten a lot of my sun safety info straight from the dermatologist, but as a pediatrician and as a mom, and as somebody who uses sunscreen pretty frequently and is the one to apply on kids, I have a few hacks and tips for what my favorites are. We're gonna go through some of that today. So first of all, let's talk about sunscreen and what age is it safe from? Well, typically we say that you can apply sunscreen after six months of age. And that's not to say that sunscreen is toxic before six months of age. It's just that we don't really have studies on babies six months and younger. So if you do take your child out, for example, my little one's going to be due in July. It's going to be peak sunny time pretty much during that part of the year. So if we do take baby out, there's some really safe steps that you can take along the way. So you want to think about clothing, something that covers their arms and their legs and helps prevent sun exposure. Now, a bonus tip would be if you could actually choose something that is UV blocking. So there's a few brands out there of clothing that can actually be UV blocking. So one of them would be UV Skins. Another one would be Sulambra or Cooley Bar. And none of those are sponsoring this video. There's just some good brands out there that I think are really great to know about. The second thing, make sure you're using something like a floppy hat or a sun hat on your little one as well. That can block some of the sun's rays. Third tip, you can actually use sunglasses as well because we don't want to, you know, hurt baby's eyes. So protect them from cataracts. And of course, the fourth and the biggest, try to stay within the shade. So that means that if you're going for a walk, make sure you kind of use the canopy cover over the stroller. Or if you're going to the beach, make sure everybody's kind of under that umbrella and you especially keep your baby that's six months and under under that umbrella because that baby doesn't really have sunscreen or sunblock to protect them. So speaking of sunblock or sunscreen, what's the difference? Sunblock typically has zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. It works by actually blocking UVA or UVB rays and scattering them. Sunscreen depends on chemicals to actually absorb them. Sunblock is actually typically better to use. It's more protective against the sun's rays. It's actually sometimes better for the environment as well. The only drawback is sometimes these can have a white cast, especially some of the older formulations. Nowadays, you see some great brands that don't really allow that anymore. And we'll talk more about that telltale white cast a little later on in the video. All right, speaking of sunscreen, sunblocks, and what ingredients to look for, I briefly just hit on what we see in sunblock, which is titanium dioxide or zinc oxide. These are typically what we see in mineral sunscreens or sunblocks. I'm a big fan of these, especially for children. They're less likely to break you out, make you have an irritation, and these would be the sunscreens I especially use if you're gonna be applying to the face because some of the chemical sunscreens which is basically the other option. If you're not using a mineral sunscreen, you can use a chemical sunscreen. The chemical sunscreen, sometimes they can kind of sting around the eyes. And I think that's really hard for our little ones, especially when they can't communicate what's bothering them, especially, and we're trying to put the sunscreen on them and you have only a few minutes to really rub it in. You wanna make sure you're not doing something that's gonna irritate them and have them rubbing their eyes the rest of the time that they're outside. So in general for kids, I'm a big fan of the mineral sunscreens or the sunblocks, which generally contain the same things that mineral sunscreens do, which is zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. I keep saying these over and over again, but it's really important to get used to really turning over your sunscreens and reading the labels on the back. So for example, I have a few of the sunscreens here that would have some of those ingredients. So an example of some of the sunscreens that might be mineral based. They may say mineral on them and then have the SPF factor. So usually I look for an SPF of 30 or more. And I think that's not just for kids, but even adults as well. And if you're an adult, the sunscreen in your makeup doesn't really count. It's not really going to do the same type of coverage that you actually need for sunscreen. So typically I'll say mineral. Sometimes it won't say mineral but you might be able to tell by the ingredients, for example. So one of those would be Neutrogena's sunscreen. So this doesn't say mineral on it, but if you turn it over on the back, 
you can see that the ingredients are zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. And some of these sunscreens might be water resistant. Now water resistant sunscreens are helpful because they may not need to be applied as often, but they still do need to be reapplied. Sunscreen in general needs to be reapplied every two hours. With water resistant sunscreen, that still needs to be reapplied, maybe the two and a half hours. But in general, I would work to reapply, especially if you're out during peak sun hours. So let's talk about what peak sun hours would be. That would be something like 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Typically, those are gonna be the times that the sun is the strongest. And in general, even for my own daughter, I really try to make sure that we stay out of the sun if we're going out for a walk or something between those hours. Make sure you try to look on your state's guidelines for schools and child care centers about if there are any sun safety guidelines. Some states actually do have some great guidelines in place about having a canopy over the play area or when children are really allowed to be outside. Some schools may restrict that 10 to 4 p.m. window or they might decrease it to be 10 to 2 p.m. Some states even allow for schools to waive a doctor's note to reapply sunscreen because some schools may actually want a letter for reapplying sunscreen or need a letter to wear rash guard clothing. So make sure you check out if this is actually something that your state does have in their policies for child care centers, daycares, or schools, because it's very helpful to know beforehand. So a lot of parents always ask me about the convenience factor because it can be really hard to rub sunscreens into your kiddos. Does a spray do a good enough job? Well, spray sunscreens are typically chemical sunscreens, and you've already heard me say that I'm not a huge fan of chemical sunscreens, but there are some mineral-based sprays, and I think these can be really helpful, especially if you're gonna be applying all over the body. So some of my favorites are Sunbums and Elta MD. And if you've heard about some of these brands before or used them yourself, you might say, huh, Elta MD, isn't that an adult sunscreen? It is, but guess what? You can absolutely use adult sunscreen on your baby. The only difference here is marketing. Let me show you an example. CeraVe baby sunscreen. The only really thing that sets it apart from the adult mineral sunscreen is the marketing. So you can absolutely feel comfortable putting on your adult mineral based sunscreen on your young child. So we have talked a lot about mineral-based sunscreens and not as much about chemical, but I do want you to know as you grow older, perhaps your child might prefer these sunscreens and they're not the end of the world, really it's not. I just prefer mineral-based over chemical because you're less likely to see an irritation or a rash. So if you do see a chemical sunscreen, so an example of this would be Sunbum's face stick. It does not say mineral, but I want you to see the ingredients. So you'll see that there's no zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. There's instead a number of other chemicals and that's essentially what a chemical sunscreen is. So I try to keep sunscreen as straightforward as possible for myself. So things I look for, mineral. I try to make sure that the consistency is easy to put on. So some are gonna be more liquidy and some are gonna be more creamy. I personally think the creamier ones are a little easier. Now that comes down to how much are you putting on? So everybody always says a shot glass for your whole body, which is true. You should actually be going through two to four ounces of sunscreen if you're gonna be out in the sun for a good majority of the day. But if you're just applying it to your face, you may only need about a quarter teaspoon amount. And that's something that's a good rule of thumb to let parents know for children as well. SPF protection is huge. As I mentioned, I usually only go for 30 minimum. And lastly, something really important to me is a white cast. I just don't like seeing it. And personally, with my skin tone, I find it's kind of important to me to make sure that at least when you're wearing sunscreen, it's not really showing up. Of course, if you're putting it on your child, that might be a different story. So I'll show you. We'll go a couple. So this is the Neutrogena. So this is Neutrogena. You can see that it's got a pretty white cast. Um, you can rub it in, but it's still pretty much there. Another one that has a pretty intense white cast, even though I do love the ingredients, is CeraVe Baby. So as you can see, it's really creamy, but when I put it on and rub it in, it does have a pretty intense 
white cast. So these are not the ones that I typically use on myself, but they might be something I use on my little one because it's not a big deal. I do see that it's becoming a struggle with her as she becomes older to really rub things in though. So I've started using more tinted sunscreens for her as well, or just sunscreens that perhaps don't have that white cast. So a few of my favorite sunscreens that are easy to put on would be the Sun Bum Mineral that's tinted and non-tinted. Both of those actually go on really nicely and don't leave any kind of hue. I like the CeraVe Tinted. The CeraVe Non-Tinted, while great ingredients, do have a white cast, so I like the CeraVe Tinted. And Blue Lizard might be another great option. One really important thing I wanna mention, since we are talking about our children and the convenience factor of rubbing in sunscreen and which one is the easiest one to use, some parents might be tempted to go for the dual sunscreen and insect repellent in one because you think, hey, if I'm gonna be outside, why not just double duty and protect my child in two different ways? But you have to remember that sunscreen has to be reapplied within every two hours. And insect repellent should not be reapplied within that short of a window. So you could potentially lead to toxicity of one while trying to do your due diligence from a sun safety perspective. So I would try to stay away from those combo products. Now the second thing to remember is if your child does get sunburn. There are a few things that you can do. First of all, make sure to find shade. Try to stay out of the sun while your child is recovering from the sunburn. There are things we can do to help provide relief. For example, some parents choose to put on aloe vera because of its cooling effect. But really, there's no science to them. Instead, what I typically use are topical steroids because that actually does calm the inflammation down and does the same kind of cooling effect while actually working more scientifically to help alleviate the burn. Other options include oral medications, things like Motrin that you could take for pain control, and even more topical emollients like Vaseline or Aquaphor, which would help to really protect the skin. The risk here would be if you were to see blistering. And if you do see blistering, I highly recommend seeking medical attention. So by applying even just topical emollients, you're able to really protect some of that skin barrier because blistering is always possible. That's why it's so important to really institute all of these. Make sure you stay out of the sun so it doesn't get worse. Make sure you try to apply anti-inflammatories. You can also take oral anti-inflammatories like Motrin. So you can see how it's sort of a multi-pronged approach to treating the sunburn. I hope you found this video helpful as we move into the summer when it comes to deciding sunscreens for your little one, choosing ingredients, learning how to reapply, and learning good sun safe practices. If you have questions, make sure you ask them below. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and make sure you tune in next Monday for more information.